Papa said something. Papa Oyedepo said something. He said, when he was celebrating this year as being a born again, he said, God now went back to him and said, I only bless you because you made a choice. Now, you guys are being blessed today because you made a choice to be here. And because of the grace that is here, that is addressing upon your life, may He never leave you in Jesus' name. Now, I am not going to give you too much story like everybody else has done. But basically, I want to tell you that everybody can become great. You can become whoever you want to become. The first time I saw myself making a film or even becoming a filmmaker, starting from my house because I watched every single film that was brought in the house. But at an early age, I lost my father. And that was meant to like, okay, that's the end of the whole journey. But that was the end of the journey for man. But for God, that was just the beginning of my journey. Amen. So basically, I was living in Muslim. So when we were talking about honorable being from Muslim, it's not the only one from Muslim. This one is from Muslim. So it's not in from Muslim to the world, and my own is from Muslim to the world too. So basically, I used to leave from Muslim, I used to leave Muslim to go to Victoria Island, that's NCA, and because I had so much passion and there was no money for me to get friends, I had so much passion for that little gift, that little machine that captures images for a lifetime, and which is the camera itself. Because of my passion, I, I decided in my one day, and I packed my things, and I started to sleep at NT. By the time, each time I get to the security post, when, when they close for the day, I'll sleep at the security post. When the security guys, maybe they have changed sheets and the rest of them, and some of them begin to give me attitude, I go to Barbie to sleep. I have a particular malam that I buy something from. And why do I buy from him? So they will allow me to sleep in the night. So when I get there, the guy gives me his, um, his carton. So I sleep on the floor, in the, on the sand, with the bricks. I wake up, bathed in the cold water, and went to work the next morning like nothing happened. Now in the process of this, I did it for over six months before anybody who knew my father knew I existed in NCA. Nobody knew who I was. The first thing I did was I threw myself away. I became a fugitive. I discovered myself. Now, it's easy for me to talk about my father now because I've discovered myself. Now, when you're talking about the journey of photography, journey of cinematography, journey of filmmaking, filmmaking is passion. And one thing about this is, I always tell people, it's just like music. If the camera does not pick you, there's nothing you can do about it. He picks his own people. It's just like music. It's spiritual. And I tell a lot of young filmmakers, I tell them, for you to be able to work actively with a camera, the camera shares the same spirit with every woman. Every woman in the house, can I have your hand up here? Every woman in the house, okay. Why it becomes so difficult for me, people like me, to really appreciate or uh, admire lots of women whenever I'm working? When I work, I work like a madman. Why? Because I cannot do this. I am facing my camera. I cannot do you at the same time. But one day, that story changed. I was getting to an age where I needed to get married. And one day I spoke to my camera I said, Camera, <laughs> there is a time where you and I need to pass with you. So what do we do? And the camera said, don't worry, I will show you something. And in the process, somebody asked the question, that can you find a wife? Or can you get somebody in the industry without controversy? Yes, of course. I met my, cat, my wife for the first time. I never met her anywhere. I never saw her anywhere. I saw her through the lens of the camera. That's a revelation today. I saw her through the lens of the camera. I was like, ah, you know, I looked again, ah, 
Et de Salomoté. Ainsi de Salomoté, il est ici. Et quand est-ce que je l'ai to manage my expenses, please put a right round of applause for my wife, Viola Rufoya. Stand up now, let them see that you're beautiful now. So basically, now I want to ask a question. The difference between the human eye and the camera, what, what do you think is the difference between us? We are the same as no, we are not. We are not. Now, before I go into the way the human eye relates, I will now come back and say, a lot of people say they are science students, they are art students, they do this, they do that. Whatever you read from science, does no matter what you do, later in the future. I was from the art class, and by the time I got into the whole paraphernalia, I want to make film, and I met Baba Sunday Chilani. He said, before I can train you, go and first read SS1 textbook physics. You cannot know photography or do photography actively, internationally, without understanding physics. And me, that I ran from chemistry, biology, and physics, now, years after, I have come to read physics. By the time I started to read, I discovered that 80% of what Sunday Kilani was about to teach me in the next five years was already in SS1 physics. All I needed to do was to read, understand. So when he speaks his language, I interpret. And those are some of the things that helped me so today. I still live with some of the rules that I get from the lights and shade, the angles and the rest of it. If you go to uh, what's the name of those lights again, there's this particular one that is very popular, the SS1 Facebook. There is one with the Ibo guy. Okay, okay. Ah. Okay, okay should be every cameraman's friend. Because everything you need to learn about the job is actually in OKK. Okay. That is one. Two. A lot of people feel that, okay, when you say the human eye, how does the human eye see? I want this to be more interactive. Please, can I have microphones with people? I want to give a shape to the human eye. Triangle, circle, rectangle, square. How does the human eye see? Yes, sir. You have the microphone, sir. Yes, sir. Which of the shapes does the human eye see? Circle, your eyes in circle. Okay, you are in trouble here. Next. Next. Oh, yeah, bro. Uh, nobody wants to talk to you. Ah, uh, well, I like you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Next person. Somebody has said circle, yeah. Triangle. Somebody said triangle. Rectangle. Ah, we are in trouble. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, which one? Square, sir. Why do you say square? Like this, 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 I don't understand. You're not sure. You're very sure. You are very sure. Who's that who was sure when you said circle? I'm sure, but I'm not that. You are not sure. You are partially sure. Okay, you are like rectangularly sure. No square sure. Okay, now let me not take you far away. Sir. You said your eye sees in a round square form. No, that is very wrong. It's only a lens that allows you to see in that form. And the only thing that God has created that sees everything in a round form is the feet. It's only the feet that sees in a round form. And most of the time when we want to create such things, we use a lens that we call a fish eye lens, which enables you to see the way a fish will always see he doesn't see things equally. He sees it in that manner. One is bigger, one is smaller. And that's the way he sees it. But the human eye sees in a square form. Now, that is young man. He actually caught it, but he was not sure of it. The human eye sees in a square form. Okay, since the human eye sees in a square form, what, uh, what shape does the camera see? Uh, there is a follow up question. Okay, okay, anyone? Saku? Hey, so. <laughs> okay. This is human eye sees in a square form. So, what angle? What shape does the camera see? Square. Seriously. Okay, let me not take you far. 
The human eye sees four angles equally, but the camera does not see four angles equally. It sees in a triangular form. It sees three dimensions. Now, most of the time, when you see tripod, there is a tripod right in front of you. Have you ever tried to ask yourself the question, why is the tripod in a triangular form? So does that mean it is in a square form? Does that mean it will not stand better? It will. But why is it in a triangular form? It's to remind you that what the camera is saying is three dimensions. You are the fourth angle. The camera without the cameraman is just one camera. The cameraman without the camera is just camera. It's just a man. You guys have to join to become that marriage of what you have become. Now, at the same time, as the man, and the camera have married each other. There is now a process in which the camera works with. Now, what is the major element that the camera works with? Anybody? Anybody? Eh? Lens. What? what okay, lens is good. Yes, yeah, fine. So what does this lens need to allow the camera to work? Light. So the first cinematographer or the best director of photography that we had in the world in record was who? God. Why? He said, let there be. Why did he need light? To see what? To see what? To see the images. Fantastic. Now, why does the camera need light? To capture the images. Now, what happens whenever you film is light comes into the camera, goes into the shutter. The shutter now converts it to magnetic images. Now, the magnetic image is what stays on your tape, what stays on your card, what stays on whatever device that you are recording it with. By the time you get to the editing end or wherever you want to do, it does the same process again. It converts the magnetic light to image. So that's the way you are in front of the projector. And you see the projector, it brings out what? Light. Now, when you are in front of a screen, not all these flat screen, all these flat screen, they are quite work. But when you use, you use all those popola, back end TV, whenever you put your hand in front of it, what do you see? Light. So, if you don't have actual light for a camera, what happens to the camera? It doesn't capture good image. But you now give the camera too much light. What happens to it again? It spoils the image. It gives the camera constipation. Now, there is always a limit that each of these things needs to get. If, they, if you give them too much, it gives them constipation. If you give them less, they get hungry and it gives very small problems for the camera. Now, because of all this process, we need to understand basic things that you need to understand about the light. Now, there are three major lighting components that you need to know. It's just the three major key points that you need to have. If either you have, most of the time, you have your key light, which is your main light. So if you're sitting outside, or you're filming outside, you're sitting in a skit, or you're sitting in a you're always trying to look out for, okay, what is my key here? What is my main light? Okay, I'm having a light from the sun. The sun is my key right now. Now, at this point in time, why the key is giving you something, is giving you a feeling. Thank you. That's why it's good to have a wife here. <laughs> so basically, you are, you are the, the sun is actually giving you the key, which is your main light. Now, why the key is giving you your major light, don't forget, it's going to drop the shadow somewhere for you. Now, when you're having a shadow at the other end, you need what to help out there. Which light? No, you need a few light. What do you need a back light? Ah, but I uh, think you are wrong. So basically, you need a few light. You need a few light in that position so that it will help to fill up the shadow end that you have that you created. Now, most of the time when we're actually having people, let's say for example, the young man that is playing with his phone, the young man putting on black that is playing with his phone, basically he's wearing black and I'm sitting it against a black chair and I'm sitting it against a grey wall. Definitely, we're not going to get good pictures with that. So, in such situations, sometimes, most of the time, you always need a backlight. 
Now, most of the time, when people say backlight, they don't actually understand what the backlight does. It just differentiates from you to the background. But if you're now filming two people, don't forget that whatever is acting as a backlight for this person becomes a key for this person. So, now, photography moves between art and science. There is a time you get into the scientific part of it, and there is a time where you get into the artistic part of it. Firstly, you need to be able to know the rules in order to break the rules. If you don't know the rules, you cannot break the rules. Now, most of the time, whenever I'm filming, I always want to move the scene. Firstly, you cannot give me, you cannot call me on a job when I've not read your script. Because I once read a book, and George Lucas, George Lucas was actually the guy that did Romeo and Juliet and ended up doing Titanic and he did Avatar. What, one of the things that George Lucas said is that three major things that make up a good movie. I want you guys to tell me the three main things that make up a good movie. So you want to try? Three main things that make up a good movie. You want to watch movie? Africa, my dear people. Good story, number two. Sound. Ah, which one? Next one. Direct two. Okay, sir. For information, according to Mr. Lucas, he said you guys are wrong. There are three main things that make a good movie. Number one, a good story. Number two, a good story. And number three, a good story. A good story with the best of pictures, zero. A, a, a bad story with the best of pictures, zero. A bad story with the best of sound, zero. But a bad film, a bad camera work, a bad sound with a good story will fly. Now, when you used to watch some of these old, um, um, I'm trying to look at this, there's this comedian that does not talk. Charlie Chaplin, thank you, sir. Charlie Chaplin does not talk. It was shot on black and white. And yet we all watched it and we enjoyed it. And so we all watched Indian films. Dementia and the rest of them. Now, on the days of society, we do not even know what they say, but we tell you the story and everything they did because of what they told the story well. Basically, those are some of the major elements that come into making a good film. One thing that works for me is the moment you see me your script, I see a picture. Before you go on the picture, I've seen the film. I saw the film already before I get there. Because I begin to see, once I read through the screens and everything, I begin to see the pictures come together, come together, come together. And at the end of the day, when I have to work maybe with a director or maybe I'm actually the one directing, when I'm directing, it's more easier for me because I take the vision. But when I need to work with a director, sometimes I need to show you what I see so that we can marry things. One of the major things that helps when it comes to filmmaking is the issue of perspective. We all see things from different perspectives. And that's one of the major elements why we always need a director or a set. Because the actor has his own perspective, the writer, the cameraman, the film guy. Everybody sees the story from different angles. But we all have to see one person's perspective in which that is the director. Now, one of the reasons why they call the cameraman, that's the head of the camera team, the director of photography, is because his own perception too matters. Because his perspective is the picture. Your perspective is the general story. So if you have been able to marry the two and understand, oh, this is where I'm seeing it from, this is where I'm seeing it from. Like when I was called to film with uh, I guess, five Baloko film that I shot, it was very bad to me, and that was just two people in the whole movie from beginning to the end. Just two people. And when I first gave me the script, I thought I had a problem. And why I said, why is killing other people in your movie? I was even called. call. He was like, look, there's just two people in this film. So that means the camera had to do more of the story telling. So at that point in time, as a DP, it was easier for me to connect. It was easy for me to talk to the director and say, okay, the introduction of this movie, can we do a camera movement, go to Said and move behind him and come back and change to the senior? Can we do this? Can we do this? Because it's a camera story. But when it comes to a story where you have one year and one people, ah, then you're in trouble. You have to just listen to what you have. So, 
One of the things I want you guys to really understand about filmmaking is as simple as it can be, it can actually be difficult at the same time. Now, when you're talking about making speech, making short movies, making each of these things, always have it at the back of your mind. This piece I'm about to make, I'm not the only one going to watch it. The bad film actually serve more. The bad ones serve more. The people who need the truth would not watch the bad ones, watch the bad ones. And the good ones, of course, will help you. So one of the times that you always have to be careful about some of those things that you show or you shoot or how you shoot it or things you say about them. Because you don't know where each of these things will work for you later in the future. So you don't underestimate any film or any visual image. Any good camera work will tell a good story. Do not underestimate what the camera is seeing. I went to shoot a film for my uncle Mike Pamelini and when he gave me the script, he gave me one he gave me about five five different scripts and when they gave me one particular one, which was Johnny and Sarko. I thought I love Johnny and Sarko because we didn't have to find and lose and all this stuff. And there was this young man that was walking towards me while I was always filming. And I was looking at him and I said, Okay, tell me, is this you're interested in this video? So yes, I'm interested now. So when I took some thoughts, I asked him to take the other thoughts. Last time I saw Tammy, he called me on it. He called me and I was called, I was invited on one of the Montaigne things that he do. And when I got there, Tammy was shooting a film with iPhone, iPhone 7 then. And I was like, ah, any more questions? When you see phone down, and he said, and you know, they call me, don't let me take me go on, when you, ah, Go on, now you said already. And that was just it. And he took a film, it was fantastic. It was one of the best films I've ever seen. And I had to call him and say, welcome to the day. You understand me? Because he did it beyond where I expected it. And most of the time when I see the Mosaic film, I always smile. Because I thank God that God gave me the opportunity to teach that boy that thing. He has gone beyond what I can do. That's just the truth. Let the truth be said. He has gone beyond me whatever I can do. So, that's why when Honorable, when we spoke about this, I just looked at Honorable and said, ah, Honorable, we should be paid in. Because in case you don't know, let me tell you a story about this man. This man, the first time I got to meet him, I just left him in him. I something happened. And when I got the letter, I took it to my wife. And my wife was like, Shalosi Silo, I said, uh, uh, Shalosi Silo, how? And I was like, what is this bro? I'm telling you about something and you're telling me to you know. And I said to this brother, I said, ah, what I mean? And I said, you know, you know what I'm okay, you know what I'm about, you know what I'm And when we were in the bus, the bus was so crowded. And you have to know that you know something like, ah, ba ba ah, ba ba ah, yes, bro. But I was like, ah, you know, you know, you know. And you know, you know, you know, you know. And when the women were busy doing their women singing, you say, ah, I want to call back now, I want to move on me, you just say, good, 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 And when Papa declared after the kilo, and he said, I declared you, man, you just don't tire than me. When you do the first one, my brother, I'm a big boy. And when Papa declared the second one, you just don't remember this story I'm saying, you know, but I was I got a call from his friend who said, Ah, sorry, let me see you today. And I said, Ah, I went to see you. When you give us a nice look, he had to call me. Any music video called me, and I had to see, and that's when the name of the TV. And he said, Ah, me, I had to see you. I'm going to give you a story. I'm going to give you a video. I'm going to talk to you. And I was like, Ah, okay. And let me talk to you. And I was like, Ah, okay. And let me talk to you. And I was like, on that, yes, sir. Okay, basically, 
one of the major standards for any film is a good story. Now, there are so many films that are actually at the cinemas today that you hardly see people go in to watch because they lost the major element, which is the storyline itself. Now, <coughs> another thing we need to look at is we need to look at the format in which each of the cinemas are actually projection. Like most of the films in the cinemas, it's not like when, when I tell Chris that we don't do both bars, it's just when you have to manage stuff. When you manage things, the show is a visual projection. Whatever you give to the camera is what the camera gives back to you. It's a give and take thing. If you give the camera a nice t-shirt, it shows it as a nice t-shirt. If you give it shit, it gives you back a shit. And that's the way it works. So, for you to be able to choose something that is actually going to the cinema, you have to always look at one, the quality of what you want to do. The quality has to do with one, the equipment being used to film, the location that you're going to shoot in, the, the level of access that you're actually dealing with. What kind of script are you actually doing? A lot of people wake up every day and say, I'm a film writer, I'm a story writer, I make films, I write films. But a lot of people don't understand the process of actually writing a film. Because for you to say you want to write a film or write a story, the first thing you do is you have your log line, which is just a one-liner telling you about the script. After you have your log line, you have your breakdown. After you go through your breakdown, you go through your, 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 uh, semi. After the breakdown, the, no, no, not even the main script, the, the one that comes as like a novel. The treatment, basically, because now look at it, I start with a one-liner. I start with the log line. When I say a log line, it's just a one-liner. I now go through the breakdown as in each scene without whatever they are going to say. And pastor's office at so so so. That's one. That pastor's this, pastor's this, this one this, this one this. Everything is just being listed as one, two, three, four, five, six, till the end of the script. Now you now come up with what we call a treatment. A treatment is now when you have like a novel of whatever you're writing. Now that gives us an insight into whatever the film is going to, what's going to happen in the film from beginning to the end. That's the treatment. Now if you're actually dealing with the director or writer relationship and you guys have to disagree within the story, it's between the breakdown and the treatment that's where your disagreement comes in. Now when you now finish up the whole process and you now give it back to the right side, okay, I think I'm good with this treatment, that's where you now does the screenplay. Now begins to add the words that the actors are going to say. Now you can see that even from the screen level, there is a level of professionalism being put into place. So you cannot get each of these things right and get the film done in a wrong way. You understand me? So I'm talking that's the space for the cinema. You understand it too. And you know Nigerian cinema today is really, I don't know, it's a little bit crappy. Because now, apart from the fact that you are, you spent your money to make the film, you still have to settle some people to get a slot in the cinema. You still have to project your film, like doing some promotion. Like each of the things that you see, uh, stuff on the buses, billboards and the rest of them, it's not the cinema that are actually doing it, it's the filmmaker that is actually spending this money. And at the end of the day, you guys come through percentages. But the beautiful thing about this is, is, I was like, the last time we discussed, I said, always look for the film as a means of achievement. Whatever you put into a film is there forever. So you can actually advertise anything in a film. Once you can do your marketing right and you get it right, definitely you always get it right. Let's say, for example, now, Honorable is here, and Honorable has a real estate company. Because Honorable has played R&D, he's going to wear a shirt with his company's logo on it. On a normal day, if you're going to ask R&D to actually wear that shirt, you're actually going to pay a lot of money. But because he's playing that role, he's playing that character, he's that person, he has to do whatever you have asked him to do at that moment. So you use the opportunity. Now, a lot of people do not look at, I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. Okay. Now, a lot of people do not take advantage of the cinema itself. When you say taking the advantage of the cinema, I'm having Brother Shaggy, I'm having Lakeith, I'm having Otto, 
Why would I not write a proposal to uh, Excel when I know I have Latif on it? Why not, why not write it? Okay, I'm having RMD. Why am I not writing a proposal to Glo when I know he's your ambassador? Why am I not using, okay, I need to buy some things and everything. Why am I not writing to the sponsors that you study? Because they have their guys on the field. They want to be part of it. So whatever you're doing and whatever you're spending, you're actually making some part of it. So you think about the economic exercise of the film that you're about to make and how does it help. Yeah. Now, you say five reasons, five things that you can use to make money. Filmmaking is a process. It's not like a give and take. Like you said about Saki. Saki did one million skits before he got to that point. It's a process. You need to do consistently. YouTube, yes, is making good money for a lot of people, but it's not going to make money in one day. Okay? So maybe when we're through with this, I'll just explain more later.